Okay, we're going to show how to install the electric pedal assist on our Beach Surrey, Surrey bike. Let's first go over some of the parts. We've opened up the package. Uh, some of the main components are going to be the wheel with the motor already attached to it. That's going to replace the real uh, wheel on the bike here. We have our ESC, electronic speed controller. This is the main brain for the electric pedal assist. And we'll go over all these different connections here so that you can attach this pedal sensor. You're also going to have this uh, wiring box that's going to go underneath the bike. You're going to get a little packet here with some basic overview uh, uh, details of the electric pedal assist. Uh, the assembly guide can be, uh, the installation guide can be downloaded from our website. In here you have uh, two uh, terminal blocks for making some wire connections. Uh, this metal piece right here is for connecting the brake hub on the new motor. Some bikes already have that tab installed, the newer bikes do. Uh, this is a wire for connecting the batteries, some zip ties for holding your cables together. You got a breaker and then a larger box that's used if you need to reinstall, uh, bolt if you need to reinstall uh, the old wheel. This is a pedal sensor guard. It's optional, can help uh, protect this a little bit. Sometimes they are more trouble than they're worth or they can fall off. You're also going to have a display, digital dis display, and we'll go over that as well. This is the battery box, so if you got the option with the uh, five 12 volt lead acid sealed batteries. Uh, you'll get the battery box as well. It's just a plastic box to house the batteries in. You're also going to want some sort of jack stand or something to hold, lift the bike up. Uh, not necessary. You can prop it up with some blocks or something else, but make it much easier when you're removing the tire and, and putting the new motor wheel on. There's two battery options. We recommend the 60 volt lithium ion battery. You can get this on Amazon. We do have a link on our website for it. This is about 18 pounds, whereas the 512 volt for a total of 60 volt uh, sealed lead acid batteries weigh about 105 pounds. So by the time you pay the shipping uh, for the weight of these batteries, it's going to cost you way more than, than this one here. And this is much lighter weight. This is what we recommend going with. Uh, this does come with a nice little plug-and-play connection so you can easily disconnect the battery. This is where it's going to connect to your e-kit here. Uh, but easily plug-and-play. You could actually have two of these in here. So if you want longer battery life and one runs out, you can simply plug-and-play the second one uh, and keep going. And it does come with its own charger as well. As you can see, we've got the bike propped up here on a jack stand. Just makes it much easier to work on the wheel with it off the ground. We're going to remove all the bolts for the rear wheel and the brake. So we have this main axle bolt here. This is the rear adjustment bolt. That's going to be on each side of it. We'll remove that first. And then we'll loosen up these bolts. You'll need a couple of wrenches or sockets. And you're also going to remove the uh, brake cable line from right here. First to remove the brake cable, we can just kind of press here. Apply the brake to loosen that up and then untwist that little adjustment nut there. And simply just pull the brake line out. And it's seated into the hub right here. You can pull that out. And I'm going to stick this spring back on the brake cable and this adjustment nut on the end and just kind of stick it over here off to the side so it's out of my way for now. Let's we'll see, that'll work. Yep. I'm going to loosen up these uh, adjustment bolts for the rear wheel. These are the tightening bolts. I'm going to take those off. To take them all the way off, just get them loose to where they'll be able to come free of the frame here. We'll do that on each side. Then we're going to loosen up our main bolts here that hold this tight onto the and that'll hang down. Same thing on the other side. And now our wheel is free to spin back and forth in this fork here. Zoom in on that. You can see you have this fork where the wheel's going to sit in the axle 
and it has that adjustment to move back and forth, this is the bolt that adjusts how far that is. And what that does is create to reduce the tension on the chain. As you pull it back, it'll be tighter. If you push it forward, it's looser. So push all the way forward, and then you should be able to take the chain off of the sprocket. And we're just going to set it aside like that so it's out of the way. And now we can easily just pull the wheel right off the bike. And the rear, rear wheel is off. We get a lot of questions asking if the wheel will fit on my Surrey. It fits on most Surrey bikes, but we have seen some older bikes that needed modification or just this width wasn't wide enough. So let's show you right where the wheel goes through the axle through these forks here. The opening is right around 5 and 7 eighths as you can see. Some bikes will have a little bit of variance there, but that's usually about where, it, where it'll be. So that's right where the axle is going to go through these two forks uh, and mount in. But as you can see, this larger fork for the whole wheel area, it tapers in so it gets smaller as it goes back. So you can see just right back in here, just past that, the chain's kind of in the way, but right there it's already at five and one eighths. And as you go further back, it tapers in there. It's at four and a half, and then all the way up into four inches. So up here is just where your wheel is gonna be. For this we're going to use a cutoff tool, but again a hacksaw, Dremel tool, anything you can get that in there and cut it. Make sure you got on your safety glasses. Careful, it will be hot. We did cut it away, but you can see there's still a little bit of a, a lip there. So we'll see if it motor fits in there. We might have to shave that down a little bit more. Looks like it's going to be, try to get it in focus, much more flush to the frame of the bike. So we'll see if the wheel will fit. Um, sometimes a Dremel tool is a little more uh, easy to get in there and work the angles. Uh, but that's how you essentially grind it off. You can also sand it down, which is a lot longer manual process. Uh, definitely recommend a Dremel or a cutoff tool for that part. Okay, so we've cut that extra little piece out and got our wheel better fitted. You can see now it slides freely back and forth into the slot there. And again, the main thing to look for, well, one, when you're putting in the wheel, you want to make sure it's in alignment. It can easily get uh, too far in on the left or right side and have your wheel a little out of alignment. But make sure that your uh, flywheel can spin freely, that it's not getting snagged anywhere on the, the fork here of the bike. So make sure that that can spin freely. Then you can see you have your spacer washers right there. This is where you're going to tighten up the... Uh, distance uh, for the the where the wheel sits the axle sits in this fork so that can change your chain tension there and on the outside uh, let's see we're gonna put our washer on the outside here we're gonna have our chain tensioning that will tighten up there and then we'll put the large nut out and I'm just gonna put it on finger tighten it for now just to hold it into place Get that to thread straight. There we go. And note that this does touch a little bit here. It's okay on this side. This is your brake. This this piece is not going to move. So your tire is going to spin in here, but this is going to be attached uh, right here. Uh, so this doesn't need to attach right to this hole. That's where this piece would come in handy. So if you did not have this tab here, you can bolt this into place. But you have this little uh, this little tab here. This is kind of the adjustment. So you're going to take this piece off right here and this little metal tab is going to go from here to here so that gives it a little bit of a adjustment room whether it needs to go left or right up or down 
and this can rotate around to fit. So once you get your wheel in the right spot, then you'll want to attach the brake hub. This is what locks the brake in place and keeps the hub uh, from rotating or spinning around when you apply the brake. So we're going to get all this tightened up. Uh, before we do that, let's take our, our power and haul line here from the motor. We're going to feed that in through so it's inside the chain loop and just stick that aside for now. And then we're going to want to take our chain and wrap it around the bike. So I need to go in just a little bit further. I just tap the wheel and we can fix the alignment later. Usually you can just hit this into place. But we're going to want to attach our chain right onto there. And I need two hands to do that. There we go. So I tap the wheel just about as far as it's going to go in the axle. I take the chain and just set it on the top of the flywheel here. I can usually just kind of, oops, got caught around that bolt. Uh, usually just rotate or pedal backwards and it will seat itself on the teeth. So you can see in this orientation, see how loose the chain is? That's way too loose. That's, that's where you're going to slide the wheel back. And get a decent, uh, decent tension on that chain. You want, don't want it so tight to where it doesn't have any flex or movement. Um, you want a little bit in there. If it's too loose, it can pop off easily. But if it's too tight, it'll snap easily. So you want to get it just right. Uh, something about like that. It has a little tension, but it's not too tight. And then once you get it lo uh, rotated and uh, set, you're going to uh, attach these uh, chain tensioning or tightening bolts. And then at the end of the haul line, there it is, feed it up, is the large nut. It's going to go onto here to tighten this all into place. And then you also have a little uh, dust cap. That'll go over top of it, and same on the outside. There should be a little uh, dust cap that uh, just attaches right onto there. That's critical. These bolts you're going to want to get nice and tight uh, so that it holds or locks the, the axle into place. You don't want the axle to actually rotate. You want the wheel to rotate. Uh, if this axle in here is rotating, it's going to twist your wires up. So make sure you get these uh, nice and tight there so that the axle itself is not spinning, just the actual motor itself. Now to show you when it's all put together, you can see that the, the chain freely rotates, it doesn't get snagged on anything. Got some uh, tension on the chain, but not too much. That might need to be just a hair looser. That's a little tight, tighter than I like. Um, but we have those uh, little washers with the tabs in there into the fork to hold it from spinning. We got the nut nice and secure and tight on there, holding this tight. Uh, your haul line coming out with your dust cap. And then similar thing on the outside with your tightening bolts. Again, as you loosen and tighten that, that pulls the axle forward or back, which creates the tension on the chain. Uh, and then you have your, your washer spacer right there with the little tab that goes into the fork. So that keeps the whole axle from rotating, as well as it being tightened down right there. Uh, so we've got the wheel in there. You notice if you just freehand spin the wheel, it's hard to tell, but you can feel a little resistance from the motor. So it's an electromagnet in there. You know, electric motor has, it'll have a charge uh, kind of built up in the, the magnet. So you can feel that magnet giving a little resistance. Uh, once it's hooked up to the electronic, uh, the ESC, the speed controller, uh, that can remove that, that charge for you. So you're not going to feel any resistance, but it's very light, very faint, but you can certainly feel it. And the more you spin it, it's kind of builds up a charge or a little resistance to the magnets that are uh, inside the motor there. Uh, but that's normal. Uh, next we're going to hook up our, our brake here. And I actually might need to loosen this just a little bit to move this to get it in the right position. Let's do that. Let's see we line up the brake right with this little tab and you do have that bit of flexibility. You're going to want to line it up. And you can tap it maybe with a hammer or something just to line it up. And then we're going to put our bolt right in through here. And I'm going to need two hands. To connect your brake cable, it's going to be very similar to before. You can see here we have the brake hub attached with this little tab to the frame of the bike. This one it was made to go up top like this before, but now we're going to have it come down in this orientation. So very similar to before. We're going to take that little uh, kind of nipple and slide it in there. You're going to want to take the barrel nut and the end tightening bolt that you had on your old brake. The barrel nut's going to slide right into this, and you notice there's a hole in it. 
the hole will thread or it will have this go right through it like that but into here and sometimes you gotta use a little bit of hand grip strength to line it up and get it in there just right it can be quite annoying to line it up right so there we go push that through and then tighten up my bolt on the other side here Thread it in a few times so it's on there good. And then that should apply my brake. <laughs> it sounds like I've got it a little too tight. I might have to loosen adjust in this just a little bit. Okay, now we've got it adjusted right. You notice there's kind of this extra slack here sticking out. You don't want anything like that near the tire or near the pedals where it can get snagged or hit on something. We're just going to feed that up through uh, the loops here on the bike and have it come up. Right here, this is where you want that extra slack to come out. That's the, probably the safest spot for it. It can stick out just a little bit like this. And again, we've adjusted this slack that was here and pushed it all the way through. We actually hid most of it right in here in this curve of the, the bike frame. It kind of fits right there and just a little bit up in, into here. Uh, that way there's no loose parts that are going to get caught around where you're, you're pedaling. 